So there have been some great linebackers in the history of the NFL who have worn the number 54. And of course, Fred Warner is on his way to being one of those. He joins me now for one up, one down. You've worn a couple of different numbers in your career, right, Fred? Like, how did it finally land on 54? Uh, yeah, so I started with 48. Was in my my first choice of numbers. They kind of just threw it to me in my first year as a rookie. Uh, you know, I kind of had a chance to change it after the preseason, but the, num the numbers that were available, I just wasn't really feeling them. 54 wasn't available at the time. So I was like, you know, I'm just going to make 48 my own. And so went went through my first year, 48. And then after my first year, I was like, man, I really want a 50 number. And so 54 had opened up. And, and I feel like it just kind of fit me right because in college I wore four, mm -hmm. 50 number, 54. So Perfect. Like, who's your favorite player that ever wore the number? Because there's been a lot of great ones. There has been a lot of great ones. Um, I mean, of recent, I've really studied Bobby Wagner's game a lot. You know, I, I really like his game. I know he's in our division, one of our division rivals. But, uh, you know, I have a lot of respect for his game. I like, I like the way he plays. And he obviously wears 54, too. You also study a lot of basketball players, right? You study sort of their mindset and how they approach the game. Why, why basketball? What appeals to you about those guys? Yeah, um, I think it's a, a lot about just, I mean, everybody's watching the documentary about Michael Jordan right now. And they're kind of getting to see a nice uh, close up, close in look on on how he went about his craft in the game. And um, I don't know, there's just something that I gravitate towards when it comes to him, Kobe, um, their, like that killer mindset, the, the mama mentality, um, you know, and just trying to kind of flip in the switch when it's when it's time to go. Um, so, yeah, I kind of try and take little tidbits from any, anybody I can. Some of the greats. Kobe used to say because of 4 a.m. So are you a 4 a.m. -er? Are you up at 4 a.m.? <laughs> no, I can't say I'm a 4 a.m. -er, but, uh, you know, maybe I'll get there one day. <laughs> How are you doing during all of this quarantine and having to stay home? I know you're in California and things are a little little more shut down there than they are in some other places. Yeah, I'm good. Uh, you know, just kind of staying to myself. I have a little Airbnb I have down in, in Irvine, California right now, um, you know, just trying to keep training you know like I was telling you I, I just got out of a workout right now we got our little virtual meetings in the morning right now with OTAs uh starting up so you know just trying to keep things as normal as possible uh, as we go through this what kind of workout did you get in today Fred it was lower body it was rough I'm not gonna lie we uh <laughs> our spot's still open over here and so we had lower body it was it was a tough one what, like, what's the one thing that you have to really focus on, right? I mean, because when you look at your position, it, 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 there, you have to keep up the strength and you're not able to kind of get that one-on-one -on -one and, and out there on the field, you know, manhandling guys on the field like you're supposed to. So how do you maintain that strength when you're not really able to kind of get out there and touch people? I think it's honestly just lifting weights. Uh, you know, you lift weights, you, you try and, uh, I mean, strength is very important. You try and keep your conditioning up as well, uh, you know, so you're, you make sure you have your wind, uh, trying to get out there and do some positional work. So I'm staying sharp on my, on my craft, on my footwork and different movements that I'll do uh, when the season starts. So uh, just doing a little, bit, a little bit of each of those. Are you quarantining on your own? I know, I know you have a big family. So have, have you joined your family and, and kind of done this together? Uh, it's just me, just yeah. myself. Uh, luckily, my family's not too far away. Uh, a lot of them live in San Diego, so it's a quick drive if I need to go see them. Um, yeah, I just had my little brother in town a couple of days ago. That was fun to see him again. I, he's in Provo uh, going his last year in BYU. So I actually covered a BYU-Utah game once. It was, I think it was 2016 I did that game. Uh, what yeah. is it like for you to be part of that rivalry? Because I've done some really cool rivalry games, but that one was special. Oh, I mean, it was always a bloodbath, honestly. I mean, it was always close down to the wire. Uh, you know, they pulled it out uh, every time I played it in my career. So I didn't get to say I won one of those games. But, I mean, it was always intense, for sure. I mean, both sides knew we didn't like each other. Uh, and fans are real rabid at that time. So it's it was good. Yeah, I, I love being part of that rivalry. I just thought it was the coolest one. I mean, I've done a bunch of them. Uh, and, and then you also played with your brother, right? I did, two years. How cool is that to kind of be on the, the field with your brother at the same time? Are, are you looking over and like watching him a lot more than maybe you watch some other people? Uh, I mean, when we're on the field, it wasn't, it wasn't really a matter of, uh, you know, watching each other, which, you know, I, I, of course you want to see your, your brother yeah. uh, do his thing, but um, you know, it was, it was really uh, surreal, honestly. Um, I know my mom was, was pretty happy about it, being able to just be able to fly out and see both of us play together. Um, you know, and that's something that you kind of dream of. And we, the fact that we got to do that, it was, it was really special. 
five siblings total, right? Yeah. So what would quarantine life have looked like? Oh, you're going to add one? It was five. <laughs> I was making sure, making sure, yeah. So what would quarantine life have looked like in your house when you guys were younger with your mom and everyone kind of having to be home and homeschooling and all that stuff? I, I'm actually, I, my, my, my mom is very blessed that it didn't happen during that time because I don't know what she would have done, but um yeah I, it's, it's tough I, I'm, I'm you know I feel for a lot of the parents out there who have little children uh you know who can't go to school and the people their parents can't go to work because they have to watch them and it's just a tough time and so you know I just you know trying to get everybody to hang in there for you know for as long as possible while we get try and get through this thing I know the Super Bowl didn't go the way that you guys wanted it to go but what was that experience like for you especially so early in your career Oh, it was very special, honestly. Uh, I mean, you mentioned how it didn't go the way we wanted it to. And, you know, at the end of the day, one team's going to win, one team's going to lose. And, uh, you know, it, it was just a – it was only a few plays, uh, you know, one or two plays that could have decided that game. Uh, but just that whole experience, the, the weeks leading up, and then um, the game itself, it was, it was surreal. And uh, being in the moment – being able to make a couple plays uh, for myself, it, it's, it's things that I'll remember forever. And having that experience going forward, I think it's going to help a lot for our team and, uh, and for myself. Where is the ball, the, the, the pick on Mahomes? Where where'd you do with it? I actually left it up in the Bay. You, you know, did? It, it, I left it in the Bay. I have an apartment up there. It's still, it's still there. So You didn't give it to your mom? That, that would be a mom, like a Mother's Day gift for a mom, right? Really? Oh, Mother's Day coming up? This there you go. Buddy, you might have gave me an idea, but nah, it's okay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, as far as like, I always watch you guys warm up because I'm on the sidelines every weekend. Do you have a particular pregame ritual? Like, do you go through the same steps every single weekend when you walk out into the field uh, in those two hours before the game starts? Yeah, it's usually all the same. Uh, you know, we have a pretty good routine that the team gives us where, you know, they tell the guys you can go out and they'll warm us up. They'll warm us up before we go out there with our pads on and everything. Um, and then when we have our pads on, doing the same drill work with our linebacker coach with the defense, um, you know, and so I just try and keep it all the same. And then when I'm in the locker room listening to the music, I always listen to trying to get in the zone. So, yeah. Is it like hip hop? What kind of music do you listen to? Yeah, hip hop, rap. Yeah. Stuff with pretty heavy bass, try and get you going. I love it. Do you ever, ever do stairs with uh, Coach Sala? <laughs> no, no stairs. <laughs> he, I mean, he, he grinds. He grinds before the game. If I did that, I wouldn't be able to play the game, honestly. He, that's his little condition for the week, I guess. Well, I thank you for the time. I don't know if you heard my dog barking during uh, the interview, but she wanted to say hello because she was barking the entire time. The kids are outside running around. So is <laughs> yeah. the life we live, right? <laughs> hey, quarantine life, you know. It's all it good. Is. It is. Thank you so much, Fred. I cannot wait to see you play this season. I really appreciate your time. Absolutely. Thank you. For the best NFL coverage anywhere on the internet, follow NFL on Fox, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube.